we're back with Winston. We now have both an x and a y variable for Winston's position. So we can move him sideways, up and down, woo! Very nice. Now let's reset these variables. They were 200 and 200 and review how this program works. So starting here, uh, we've got an eye size variable that's being used to control the eye size because the eyes are all 40 pixels wide and 40 pixels tall. And then we have these X and Y variables and those position the center of the face. And you can see them used in this ellipse command here that draws the big yellow circle. And then down here for the eyes, the X and Y are used again. And here the eyes are positioned relative to the center of the face. So maybe this one is 50 pixels to the left of the center. And this one is 100 pixels to the right of the center. Okay. So pretty cool, and that's why we're able to move Winston up and down. Now, I want to be able to control more things about Winston's face with variables. So I want to figure out what else in the program we can store as variables. To do that, I'm going to go through each line of code and look for what we call hard-coded numbers. Those are numbers that are just literal numbers, not variables or dependent on variables. So let's start here in the first ellipse call. We have 300 and 300 for the width and height. Those are just literal numbers. So let's make a variable for those instead called face size and have it store 300. Now we'll just write face size, face size. Okay, let's keep going. We can skip colors. Now the ellipse commands are either, they're all variables or dependent on variables. So I'm gonna leave them like this for now. And then the mouth command, those are dependent on X and Y, but these here are just literal numbers, 150 and 150. So we're gonna say mouth size, it's a good name, equals 150. We'll replace this with mouth size and mouth size. All right, so now we have the sizes of the shapes stored as variables at the top. That means that it's really easy for us to change the sizes like this, like, woo, Winston's hungry. And then like maybe like, you know, Winston's getting hungry and then he eats lots of donuts and then he gets super big. All right. But uh, there's something I don't like about the program right now. So, you know, if I make the face size really small, it starts to look funny because the eyes and the mouth are sticking out of the face and at certain points it doesn't even really look like they're connected to that face or it's not really even a face anymore, is it? So what I really want to happen is that when I change face size, I want the eyes and the mouth, I want their size to change along with it. So if I make face size be half the size, I want the mouth to be half the size too. So that means that I want to calculate mouth size and eye size as fractions of face size. All right, so let's reset these variables and I'll show you what I mean. Let's start with mouth size. So right now, face size is 300 and mouth size is 150. So if we think about them relative to each other, we'd say that face size is twice as big as mouth size or that mouth size is half the size of face size. And we can write that in code like this, one half times face size. Okay, so this line of code says that we take the value of face size, multiply by a half and store that in mouth size. So that if we change this here, it would figure out what half of that was and that would become mouth size. Perfect, that's what we want. So now eye size. So face size is 300 and eye size is 40. So we need it to be 40 three hundredths of face size, which is really, uh, let's see, four over 30, which we can simplify down to two over 15. So we're gonna say two over 15 times face size. By the way, if you're new to fractions and that math is tricky for you, you can learn more about fractions on Khan Academy and come back here when you're feeling ready. Here, 
and just go there. Okay, so let's try resizing the face again. Haha, -ha, check it out. The mouth and the eye resize proportionally to the face. But you probably noticed something is wrong. The eyes and the mouth are still sticking out of the face, even though they are much more appropriately sized. That is because we still have some hard-coded numbers in our ellipse commands, some numbers that should actually be fractions of variables instead. Here, I'll show you. So for the I ellipse, we have x minus 50 for the x position. So this means it's always x minus 50, even if we make our face size smaller than 50 pixels. And that definitely doesn't make sense because that means that the left eye is going to be not even in the face anymore. So it should be x minus some fraction the size of our face. And we can figure out the fraction the same way. 50 relative to the original 300. So 50 over 300, 5 over 30, 1 over 6. So 1 over 6 times face size. And we see another 50 here. So we can do the same thing, same expression. Here we have 100 over 300. That's going to be 1 third times face size. This one is 60, so that'll end up being 1 fifth times face size. And here, this is another 50, so that's 1 sixth again. And then 40, that's what we figured out up here. 2 over 15, so 2 over 15 times face size. All right, so let's try again. Oh, look at that. Look at that's beautiful. So good. All right, so let's review. We created this variable that stored the size of the face, and it just stores a number. Then we have these mouth size and eye size variables, and we calculate them based as fractions of face size to make sure that their values always change based on what, what we start this one off as. Then all of the offsets are calculated based on face size too, to make sure the position inside the face changes if face size changes. Whew. All right, so now that we really understand how to make variables dependent on the values of other variables, we can do so much more with our programs. Let's celebrate by making Winston huge. Yeah, go Winston.